the Monkey Mind Podcast, your number one platform for athletes and mental health, hosted by Danny Perez and Anthony Florentino. This podcast is proudly brought to you by Daily Dose CBD Inc. Daily Dose CBD Inc. creates full-spectrum CBD products ranging from tinctures, bombs, and dog treats. Research has shown that CBD has successful results in aiding in the following areas. Anti-inflammation, anxiety, PTSD, help with breaking addiction, neuroprotection, epilepsy, arthritis, chronic pain, and sleeping disorders. Daily Dose makes an extremely safe and effective product that we know you will love, enjoy, and benefit from. Daily Dose has given Monkey Mind listeners 15% off all their orders. Head over to DailyDoseCBDInc.com and use promo code MONKEYMIND15 for 15% off your purchases. That's promo code MONKEYMIND15 for 15% off all your orders at DailyDoseCBDInc.com. What's up, everybody? This is episode 63 of the Monkey Mind Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Perez. Um, this is a Q&A episode I did with my buddy, Pat Shea. He helped me ask the questions, um, and I answered them. Um, yeah, so pretty much want to do this, just mix it up, have a little fun. Um, yeah, some of the questions are pretty personal. and took me a while to muster up the courage to finally post this video, but um, yeah, here it is. Hope you guys enjoy, and hope to do more of this stuff again soon. This one's a long time coming. I got my buddy Pat Shea helping me out here. Um, it's a and a episode. Um, so a couple, I don't know, I think months ago now at this point, I put up, up on our uh, Instagram um, story a Q&A that I wanted to do just um, whatever questions people have regarding mental health, me, whatever the case is. And yeah, I got the questions and just get, like, I don't know, got anxious about it and <laughs> haven't done anything with it since, but I've been meaning to. Um, so I'm keeping my word here and I'm posting the Q&A and Pat's going to help me um, just asking questions. And Pat, you could chime in whenever, whenever oh, yeah. you want and whenever you feel. Um, but yeah, Pat's going to help me out asking me the questions and I'm going to answer them for you guys. So um, yeah, let's get after it. Shazo. Hey, thank you for having me on here to ask you these questions. I'm mm -hmm. honored for the, that you texted me. Of course. Uh, you don't want me to name the people? So there's one person that's anonymous that's and it's the, in one of the comments. Okay. The comment one. Okay. And you'll see like the question is anonymous after. Oh, okay. Right. I got you. So, okay. but the other, but the other ones aren't cool. anonymous. So. so question number one, we have from Allison Marie. Uh, she says, what's your biggest piece of advice for someone who's going through a tough time mentally? Biggest thing is just open up and say something um, as difficult as it is. Um, I'm confident for the most part that you'll get a good response back more times than not, you will get a good response back. Um, as far as just people wanting to help find someone that you can trust, um, whether it be family or a close friend, a significant other and open up to them and just say, Hey, I'm going through a tough time right now and I need help. Simple, simple as that. Um, and if there isn't someone that you feel you trust, I'd say talk to a professional, um, whether it be a sports psychologist, uh, a therapist, whoever the case is. Um, biggest takeaway is just open up to somebody because letting it fester in your head and in your mind is going to do absolutely no good for you. Would you agree, yeah. Pat? I, yeah, I'd say I think <clears throat> I think you'd be surprised how many people can relate to the struggle. Um, I mean, we're all life is hard. You know, we're all going through shit. It's, you know, you don't have to go through it alone. So I think that was good advice. Just don't be afraid to open up and, um, get help it can go a long way. Question number two, it's from S O K D. He says, how has the podcast impacted your own battles with mental health positive and or negative and how has mental health affected your relationships with family friends girlfriends etc okay that's a large that's a big question how is the pod the first part is how yeah deep question uh yeah. the first part was how has the podcast impacted your mental health journey positive or negative um 100 positive like in every possible way um i'm comfortable in saying that my anxiety is by no means cured but it's if I'm having an anxious day, it's they're more far and few between now. Um, I'd say, and I think the reason being is because I've just put myself out there um, to talk about this stuff and have people 
um, come on and feel comfortable sharing their stories and being able to relate to more people. I just, I think I've become comfortable in realizing that, Hey, like what I'm going through is completely normal. Um, I used to think it wasn't, I used to think I was kind of on an Island going through the stuff on my own. So I've been having the podcast and having well, 62 episodes now. Um, you kind of realize that, Hey, like everyone goes through this exact same stuff in one way or another. Um, and I'm no different and that it's more normal to go through something than it is to not, in my opinion, that's how I feel just from oh, yeah. having so many people on and people open up to me and people that I didn't expect to reach out have, have done so. So that's the first part to that question. Next part. Yes. Yeah, so the second part is how has mental health affected your relationships with family, friends, girlfriends, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. I remember getting this question. Uh, that made me kind of think about how I wanted to answer this. So. Yeah, it's de- that's a deep one. It's- it is, but uh, it is what it is. So as far mm-hmm. as family goes, I, <clears throat> I've i always been open with my parents and they've always been super supportive. So I'm super grateful for them. Um, and they've given me all the resources that I've needed, whether it be support or going to seek therapy or you know just an ear to listen to. So um, they've never kind of been the type of parents who are like, you know, my parents are old school. Um, but they're never the type to be like, oh, this doesn't exist. Like, what are you talking about? And, you know, that kind of thing. They've yeah, always yeah. kind of been, they've always kind of been listening and supportive and say, hey, like, what are we going to do to get you help um, and get you on the right track? So as far as with my parents, um, it's definitely strengthened my relationship with them because I've been as open as I possibly could with them. And um, there's really nothing to hide anymore between us. So yeah. that's just kind of out in the open. And um, as far as uh, friendships, relationships and things of that nature, um, I'll speak kind of broadly on this. I don't want to kind of get too, I'll let you guys all fill in the blanks essentially. So, um, I'm an open book, like as open as they come, as far as this stuff goes, I don't care at this point of, you know, what, what, uh, people's perception of me in regards to my mental health is. And I think the reason being is that just, there have been some times where I've been at my absolute lowest point, um, ever, um, <clears throat> going through a really hard time with just my mental health as a whole and hockey and hockey contributing to that and not finding myself in situations where I'd, I'd like to be in and um, kind of feeling myself like getting pushed out of the game, which is a scary thing. I've talked about it a million times and that drove me to a really uh, low and scary point that I was stuck in for the longest time and probably my longest episode with just having a, you know, anxious, depressed time in my life. And, um, there, there was people that I would always go to for help, um, and just kind of talk this stuff through. And, um, I think at times I was a burden on certain people. Um, but at the same time, I've had people who, uh, I mean, I've been called a pussy for seeing a therapist. Uh, I've been told not to talk about my mental health publicly as far as like, in regards to certain people, just like, Hey, don't, you know, keep this under wraps. Like, um, this doesn't really exist. It's not a legitimate thing. Um, and this is at my absolute lowest point. So you can only imagine the place that that took me and just kind of realizing like, wow, this is, you know, and that was after a time where I was coming, I came home twice. Um, when I was playing down in Macon, um, in my first year of professional hockey, I came home twice to see a therapist because my anxiety was so bad and needed to take some time away from the team. And um, I had a buddy picking me up from the airport, leave it at that. And uh, I walked in, I was like, hey, like, thank you for picking me up. Great to see you. Um, I'm excited to get home and kind of sort this stuff out and, you know, get the help I need, see a therapist. And um, they just kind of looked at me puzzled and said, you came home to see a therapist. Huh? And I was like, yeah, you know, I've been going through a hard time. You know, I've talked to you about this, you know, it's, it's been rough on me and you know, the state that I've been in and kind of the response I got was just that I was a pussy and flat out was told that like, you're a pussy. Um, so that kind of hurt just kind of this, you know, certain, you're trusting certain people and then having that be the response sucked, which is why going back to the first question, I was like more times than not, you'll get a positive response because that was a one-time situation. Right. Um, so I don't think that's going to happen all the time. And, um, but yeah, that definitely, I guess to answer the question, it's a long story, but um, it's been it's been more beneficial to talk about my mental health than it's been negative. That was like a one negative response, but um, yeah, I think at times it's maybe gotten in the way of some friendships and, and um, things of that nature, but that's kind of been how, how that went. 
I think for anyone who would that you if you feel that you're a burden to someone like if for people listening and then obviously like you had the um, experience or like if you feel like you're a burden to your friend or they express that you're a burden to them or that you're a pussy or whatever I just think that they're not someone that you want in your life like for people listening if that's happening to you I just think you need to choose who you're surrounding yourself with better you know there's certain people that you know it doesn't matter if you have a lot of friends just the right ones I think and if you are a friend of someone who is struggling and you kind of feel maybe you're awkward about you know being there for them you don't really know what to do I th- I don't think you realize how impactful it can be for that person to have a good friend there for them it can go a long way so don't be that douchebag t- calling your friend a pussy because he's struggling mentally that's that's not cool so um but yeah i think i think you'd get some great advice there yeah just the biggest thing is those those people don't belong in your life quite frankly um and it's kind of ironic that <clears throat> after this person was removed from my life um who made that comment a large, large, large weight of my anxiety was, went with it. Um, so I think it's just, it just goes to show that when you have negative people, negative presence in your life, people who aren't um, showing support and love, I think it can really flare up anxiety. Mm-hmm. And they say that, you know, some of the ways, is, you know, of curing anxiety or, or at least mitigating it is by a change of environment and things of that nature. So I think um, ultimately this person kind of, being removed from my life was a hundred million percent for the better. And um, I've noticed a great improvement in my mental health once, you know, that was the case. Okay. And that's a good lesson for the, for people listening who have a situation like that, how long of like a way it can go if you do remove that negativity from your life. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Okay. Next one. Third question here. We got, anonymous um how do you connect with people again after you've shut them out for so long i'd say flat out reach out um i think ultimately people will understand if you're completely transparent and open and honest with them and say hey um i was going through a really difficult time in my life and i just isolated myself and it was something i felt i needed to do and i i apologize for um isolating myself from you I was just, like I said, in a tough spot and I thought it was the best thing I needed to do for myself. And I think if you're open and honest with them, I think they'll understand. And if they're not, then people like that are, don't really belong in your life. Cause I think most people understand who have gone through something like that or who are just supportive people that, Hey, you know, it's not personal. It was just something that they felt um, was best for their mental health. And, you know, if they're apologetic and sincere with, you know, with that, then I think more times than not, people will be like, okay, yeah, I understand. Um, no hard feelings kind of thing. Do you agree? I, I think absolutely. Yeah. If they're, and if they're not, it's like, again, maybe they don't belong in your life. You know, it's, it's, they're not understanding of that. They, maybe they haven't gone through that themselves and they don't get it. And that's not your fault, you know, and that's, that's the totally them problem. But mm. I think that's great advice. And if they're a true friend, they'll understand that you were going through a struggle or if it's a friend or a girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever it may be, I think they mm. would understand that you went through a struggle. But. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah. I just think that, like I said, but the previous thing we were talking about, anyone who doesn't just, it may be tough to have them mm-hmm. out of your life, but ultimately it is for the better and take it from somebody with experience in that field of, you know, yeah, it being a difficult thing to do, but, or happening, but ultimately it, it is for the better. 100%. And I actually, too, to build on that, just one thing I've realized too, in doing this is I was so anxious about releasing like the first episode and each mm-hmm. episode I released, I was always worried and worried and worried about like, you know, I guess the perception and I still struggle with it, but it's incredibly freeing to be yeah. your most you or I guess mm-hmm. yourself um, because then, you know, take it or leave it. Like I flat out, like I've been open and honest about how I've struggled and, you know, ways that I've coped that haven't been the best. Um, but 
just knowing that this is who I am, people can take it or leave it and not care anymore is kind of a pretty liberating feeling. It's a very freeing feeling when you finally, like our example is putting ourselves out there online, but it's more because like when we're being ourselves, like actually it's funny you said that too, because I'm just recently, right? So like I started that like second channel and I dropped it. So the reason I just dropped it, the reason I started in the first place is because I wanted an outlet to be myself away from hockey. And then I realized I had this like awakening Friday where I was like, what am I doing? Like, why would I separate who I am? Cause I had this fear, right? Cause like I obviously built my channel on hockey vlogs and just all hockey related shit in a specific vlog. But I found myself not enjoying vlogging too much. Like I, like I was, especially as when I'm alone, it's not a fun thing. And I wasn't enjoying that channel at all. And I'm like, why would I post shit? I'm not liking. So I moved my uh, skits and sketches are now getting onto my main channel, one channel. And I'm just recently, like I put the first one on this channel yesterday. It performed like not, it doesn't perform as well as like a hockey video. And I don't, and it was, it is the most happy that I've been posting on that channel in the last months, because it's just something that I truly enjoyed and like doing. It's a freeing feeling. And I think in the long run, that will benefit me because it's something that I'm actually, I'm putting out shit that I actually like. And I think that benefits you when you finally, like you said, it's a freeing feeling when you finally just, you know, be you, you don't worry too much about being who you're supposed to be, you know? So exactly. I thought yeah. that was a funny crossover there. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, and like, same thing for, on my end with being called a pussy at my absolute lowest. Like it's, I'm sure life can surprise me and it gets worse, but like, honestly like i've already been called a pussy before for right for seeing a therapist and for having mental health issues like oh whatever you want to call me a pussy great that's fine like at this point i don't care um because i know that i'm not i know i've made a difficult decision to walk away from the one thing i've loved more than anything in the world and that's hockey to see a therapist so if like mm -hmm. if i had the balls to make that decision like I'm, I'm very comfortable like whatever call me a pussy all you want like i know i'm not it's fine um i don't care about like you know, the people who are, have like this tough shell of like, yeah, like what he talks about his mental health. Like, I don't, yeah, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, I don't care. I'm impacting way more people positively than, than your negative opinion of what I'm doing. And that's the most important thing. So, um, yeah, just be yourself. And I know it's difficult and it's taken me a while to start to become more comfortable in my own skin and with what I'm doing and kind of my path in life, but just try and break yourself out of your comfort zone as much as you can. Um, because it does start to free up a lot of headspace mm -hmm. and a lot of like these mental constricting boundaries that we put on ourselves. hundred percent. I, I, from my own experience have, have had that happen to me too. It's, it's really great advice. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very freeing feeling when you finally just drop it and just do you, you know, yeah. and it doesn't can't get too caught up in what people might think or what certain people, if there are people vocally calling you a, uh, a pussy in your situation there's there's obviously something in going on in in their life that's making them like try to bring you down it's mm. just that's not that's not on you yeah no definitely and um i think the biggest thing too that i'll reiterate is that it's not easy though it's okay. um opening up yourself and breaking out of your comfort zone is a very difficult thing to do so i totally understand but um nothing good comes out of the easy stuff. I think the hard work is where the real uh, magic happens. So Shazo, I know you know about that with what Absolutely. you've been doing and um, yeah, pretty much. I don't know if you have any other comments or things you want to say, but we had three questions. That's all we got. Hopefully, you know, keep doing this a little more often. And, um, put myself out there more, get, have everyone listening, um, get to know me more as the host here of the show. And yeah, it's enjoyable doing this and I'm hoping that it, it helps people ultimately. So um, but yeah, thanks for helping me out, Shazo, if you have Absolutely. any comments. I, yeah, I was trying to find a quote I saw. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, this is, so Mike, I'm, I, I told you I'm a big Mike, uh, formerly known as Mike Studd fan. But he tweeted, he goes, it's ironic how we become unhappy when we're faced with challenges, when in reality they're a big part of what life is. When everyone is solved, the new one will service in due time. The challenges don't bring the unhappiness, though. 
the expectation we have that life should be easy does. So it's like life isn't supposed to be easy. Like you said, it's not going to be easy to put yourself out there, but it's not supposed to be, you know, that the challenges are what make us a better person. It mm-hmm. helps us grow. And I think that was just a cool quote that resonated with me well. But oh yeah, yeah I thought yeah. I thought that was cool. It's just like you can control, you have more control of in your happiness than you realize, but it comes from within. Yeah. It's not the it's not gonna be easy. It's kind of exactly. No, it in October 2019 to early April 2020 was probably like the worst phase of my life, I guess I could say to date, where I really struggled. And looking back, I have can't be more grateful that it happened to me because mm-hmm. so many doors closed and so many things happened to me that have shifted my perspective and kind of pushed me in a direction in life where I'm feeling the most fulfilled I've ever fulfilled I've ever felt in my life. Um, I'm the least anxious I've ever been on a consistent basis. I'm the ha- happiest I've ever been on a consistent basis, and. I think a large part of that was because there were so many doors that have closed on me during that time period and so many low points that those closed doors opened up some new ones. Um, For sure. I think you were forced to like hundred percent doors closed. You know, you got put into this worst position you've ever been. You were almost forced to deal with it where I think a lot of times people try to avoid it. They try to avoid the anxiety. They try to, okay, how can I put this off for a second? But it's really like, once you face it and, you know, force yourself to grow is when you see the biggest change in happiness. Like you, like you say, you're looking back at yourself a year ago, you probably won't even recognize yourself. Like you probably see pictures or whatever of yourself. You're probably like, I don't even know who that was. You yeah. know what I mean? Cause you've come so far in this past year because you were forced to face, you know, what you were going through. And I think yeah, that, that's, that's just an example Like the times of struggle are where, you know, the most, change and growth comes easily yeah no i actually it's funny you mentioned i have a picture of myself uh my headshot when i was called to kansas city in the coast yeah um i was 183 pounds i think wow I looked like complete shit that was after i'd come home for the second time to see a therapist and like get my shit sorted out damn and when i was home like um cole schultz over at kansas city yeah and the coach there told me to come up and I was like, I don't, don't want to go flat out. Don't want to go. And he just kept like persisting that I come up. Um, eventually did got my head shot. And I look like, I look at it, man, I don't even recognize who I am. I look horrific. Wow. Um, so just funny to sh- like to see how the mental instability or the, yeah. the shit mental health that I was going through was severely impacting me men- uh, physically. Um, so that's why it's so important to get yourself the help you need because I think if I, I was getting worried that if I kept going with with the you know state of mental state that I was in I think I would have seriously gotten sick um mm-hmm. so I'm happy I'm fortunate that it didn't happen but yeah it's just funny that you mentioned that because I immediately thought of my headshot in Kansas City how yeah. like, like sickly I looked <laughs> but but yeah no I guess we'll wrap it up um like I said hope to do some of this again soon maybe talk about some other different topics mm-hmm. kind of want to uh I think I told you Shays I want to talk about kind of alcohol and how um, for sure just developing i guess like it's weird to say but yeah you know, just how i feel like a healthy relationship with it um yeah as much as i'm doing something you know this podcast um about mental health i i'm still one to partake in, in drinking and having a good time and i like to do it um but i found a healthy balance with it and i understand that when um when i'm you know if i'm ever spiraling in a negative thought loop or thought process kind of nip it in the butt and don't touch it for a bit. So, um, but yeah, that, we can talk about that later on, but just kind of some topics I'd like to be more open about and kind of, uh, I guess, chip away at breaking the stigma of, of talking about it in regards to mental health. So, but Shazo, thanks again for coming on and absolutely helping me out with this episode. And yeah, I'm excited to release it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, Enjoyed it. And uh, we'll drop your socials and all that in oh, the, uh, word. below, but yeah. Thank you. All right. Good stuff. One second.